Because if you'll remember, we shared earlier this year that the word testimony in the Hebrew comes from a, a root Hebrew word, which means to repeat it or to do it again. So every time you hear a testimony, what's happening is you're creating an atmosphere that says, God, do it again. Come on, does anybody here have blood sugar disorders that need to be healed? You have hypoglycemia or even a di diabetic condition that you want to see God touch? I want you to just lift your both hands up to the Lord right now. Father, we just decree right now, God, the same way that you healed me, Father, you can heal them, Father. I know that you're the God that heals, and we loose healing power. We loose the anointing right now, Father, into the bloodstream to cause diabetes or uh, low blood sugar, Father, what? Whatever it is to come into proper and miraculous balance in Jesus name amen and amen everybody say do it again God so we're going to talk about some testimonies because I believe that we've got to activate and stir our faith to hear what God has done now I had a dream about two years ago, and most all of you will remember this, but the Lord, all night long, I kept seeing scenes from the scripture and times of past revivals and times of past healing ministries. And every different scene that I would see, I would hear the Lord say to me in my dream, if I did it then, I will do it again. Come on. If I did it then, I will do it again. So I want to just give you a little principle of faith that we talked about a few weeks ago, and it comes out of Romans chapter 10, and this is the principle of activating our faith for anything that God wants to bring to us. In Romans chapter 10, verse 7, it says, but what does it say? The word is near you in your mouth, everybody point to your mouth, in your mouth and in your heart, okay? Okay. That is the word of faith in which we preach, that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Everybody say saved. For with the heart one believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. For the scripture says, whoever believes on him will not be put to shame. So then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Look at this word saved. It's such a cool word in the Greek. It's the word sozo. And sozo by definition implies a deliverance from all things that hinder a person from receiving all the benefits of redemption. So when it's saying you'll be saved, it doesn't just mean saved from hell. It means healed, delivered, prospered, set free, empowered, come on, full of the Holy Ghost, you'll be saved. It means to deliver or rescue from danger or destruction, to make whole, to save you from suffering by sickness, to restore to health, to make well, to deliver from the evils which obstruct the reception of all messianic deliverance. How many want to be saved? You're saying, I thought I was saved. You are saved, but we need to wake up to what full salvation means. Amen? Because every principle in the word operates out of this principle. It's got to be in your heart, then you confess it with your mouth, and then you take action. What do you believe in your heart? What are you saying with your mouth? And what action, what corresponding action do, are you taking to believe that you've received that particular release of salvation. Now, when we talk about healing, we have to realize that in the church world today, there are three basic beliefs about healing. Number one, if you'll go to that next screen, number one, people believe that healing has passed away. It was over and done with after the first century church left the scene, and that God is not doing that anymore today. Many of you know my story that when I got healed of a torn cartilage in my knee, I went to my denominational church pastor, and he dropped his arm. When I gave him the great testimony of my healing, he dropped his arm around my shoulder and said, girly, that wasn't God that healed you. God does not heal today. My question to him, my honest question, I wasn't being snarky. My honest question was, pastor, then are you saying the devil healed my knee? He didn't quite know how to answer that, okay? because clearly my knee was healed, okay? 
But there are some people believe that the healing is not for today. I beg to differ. Amen. There is a special grace doctrine that says God will only heal a few if it be thy will. How many have ever prayed that prayer or heard somebody pray that prayer? Father, heal them if it be thy will. Well, let me just tell you, it's his will. It's always his will to heal. Jesus died on the cross to not just pay the penalty for your sin, but to also pay the penalty and pay the price for your healing. And so we actually line up with number three, that healing is part of God's redemptive power that was purchased for us through Jesus Christ. And I'm I'm telling you that your ability to receive healing depends on what you believe. Come on, if you don't really believe it's God's will for you to be healed, you're probably not going to get healed. But if you believe Jesus paid the price, that by his stripes we were healed, if you actually believe that, then you actually understand that it's part of the redemption power that God has released to us so that we can receive all. I want to give you a quote by a man named William Branham. He was... um, He he experienced a lot of healing in his ministry, and he said this, God the Father heals the sick to prove to the world that he raised his son from the dead. This was something that he used to say, God the Father heals the sick to prove to the world that God raised his son from the dead. Guess who he influenced? He influenced a man named Oral Roberts. He influenced a man named T.L. Osborne. Great healing revivalists in their day because they believe that when God heals the sick, it demonstrates to the world that God raised his son from the dead. When God healed me of hypoglycemia, when God healed my messed up knee, let me tell you, it was a sign and a wonder to my unbelieving family who thought their daughter was a spiritual fanatic, which I was, and I am. (laughs) But you know what? It was a sign to them. How many believe it's a day of signs and wonders? So let's look at Isaiah chapter 53. And this is a, an Old Testament prophetic word about what Jesus was going to do on the cross. It says, surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes, we are healed. Now, when you actually see this quoted in the New Testament, it actually says, by his stripes, we were healed. Because your healing isn't now. Your healing was purchased then. Let me just look at what some of these, couple of these words mean. So surely he has borne our, our griefs. That word born means he's lifted us and carried us. He's borne our grief. He's borne our physical pain, our sickness, our weakness, and our mental and emotional distress. How many think that maybe that covers it all? And he carried our sorrows, sorrow meaning disease, and the pain that is associated with sickness. How many know pain wears you down? Pain wears you out, tries to get you out of faith in God, tries to to influence your your soul and your spirit man. I want to remind you that we are a tripart being. We are a body, we are a soul, and we are a spirit. Okay? We are a spirit. We have a soul. That's your mind, your will, and your emotions. And we live in a body. But do you realize that when your body is out of whack... It'll oftentimes affect your soul, and if you're not careful, your spirit. Sometimes when, I, when I'm sick, I walk around the house praying in tongues, commanding my spirit man to rise up and take control of my body and my flesh. <laughs> Come on, strengthen your spirit man. He was wounded for our transgressions. He was wounded for our rebellion, our sin, our revolt against God. He was bruised for our iniquities, our perversity, our depravity, our guilt, and our evil. And by his stripes we are healed. That is the word Rapha, Jehovah Rapha, to mend, to cure, to make whole, to repair, and to be a physician. God is our physician. Amen? Now, this is not a church that says don't go to a doctor. We believe in medicine. We're thankful for medicine. We're grateful that God anoints doctors to help us heal and to help us be whole. But let me just say, doctors can't actually heal. God heals. 
Amen. Look at this in Romans chapter 8, verse 26. This is probably my, my favorite scripture of the day today. I love getting in there and finding out what these words mean. It says in Romans 8, 26, the spirit helps our infirmities or our weaknesses. Look at this word helps. The spirit will stand up within you, will partner with you against. He will position himself in you. The Holy Spirit wants to stand up within you. Come on. Sometimes we think, oh, I don't have enough faith to get healed. I don't have enough this. I can't do this. I'm tired. I, 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 I'm weary. I'm weary of, of waiting. I'm we weary of not, not seeing the manifestation. And at that point, we have to understand, we pray in the Spirit, and the Spirit of God stands up inside of us, for us, and stands against every sickness, every infirmity, every terminal disease, every muscular disease, every plague, every ve being vexed with demons, comatose invalids, feebleness of mind or body that's what that word means come on the holy spirit stands up see the thing is you don't have to do it the holy spirit stands up and helps you deal with your infirmity 